we uh, we're in this series on uh, the Proverbs uh, life goals, and uh, today we've got, I think maybe the best life goal of them all. We'll get to that here in a few minutes. Uh, you know, I I, I I always want to give credit where credit is due. Uh, I, I lean heavily on lots of commentators on Scripture and ones that I trust biblically and that sort of thing. Uh, you know, and uh, this is uh, you know this this series is no different than any other. I, I read a lot what other people have studied to try to understand the scriptures the best that I can and what I think the, the Lord is really wanting for us. Guys like Danny Aiken and Ray Ortland, they, they've both been uh, instrumental. And I, I just, uh, you know, sometimes I, I, I'm not, I never want you guys to think Chris is really smart. I'm, I'm an idiot, okay? Like if you haven't figured that out by now, uh, I'm straight up. And so uh, credit where credit is due. Uh, those guys both uh, just reading those at last week, this week, you know, just... They get they get some credit for things here and there, and sometimes I'm I'm not always like oh that very thing came from this guy whatever. But I just just know I didn't come up with it. Okay, I'm not taking credit for it, but I want to give credit, uh, you know, where I can. So uh, I kind of failed that whole like uh, what was that book we had to look at the M- MLS or something? I don't remember what that thing was where you had to cite everything. Oh my gosh, oh man, glad I'm not in school. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, we're excited about today. Uh, this, uh, uh, let me, oh, let me throw this at you real quick. Uh, for those of you that have been around 24 for a long time, you've heard me mention it. We got a lot of people visiting that kind of thing. Uh, just, just a thought, just a thought. Um, you know, we really do have a lot of people visiting more than we've ever had visiting in a string of Sundays. I'll put it that way. Um, and so, uh, let me just throw something at you. Something that happens. Uh, a lot of times when you have this many people uh, is uh, it's just hard to even find a parking spot, much less find a seat. Uh, just be mindful of that stuff. Uh, in fact, if you ever felt led to park over at City Hall and walk over, I mean, some of, you, some of you guys can't wait to post your pictures when you're out on the hiking trail. I think you might be able to make it up the hill behind City Hall, you know, but I whatever just just throwing it out there uh, i will say this i have i from studies and stuff that i've read in the past and and just and just even talking to people and then even listening to people talk about this the last few weeks here uh is that you know people that are visiting coming for the first time if they show up and they're driving through and driving through and they can't find a parking spot they may not go next door and park they may not know that that's okay to be honest with you and so they may just drive themselves on somewhere else, you know. And and to be honest with you, you know, the Lord is sovereign over all. I trust in all those things. You know, He's got a plan. Uh, what I don't want to end up happening, if as long as they're going to a, a gospel believing church that is about Jesus, great. But if they're not, we we lost we lost something there, you know. And so it's important. Uh, it's, it's, you know, there's salvation at stake, I guess is what I'm saying. So just, just think about that. Just be mindful of that. Not, I don't want everybody to go park over at city hall next week or something, but you know, especially, especially what happens is because we have so many people like in both services and then there's a little overlap in time, you know, just people getting kids and hanging out and talking. We want people to, uh, to hang out and talk and, and build relationships and those things. Uh, it just creates, it creates a lot of crazy uh, out there. You guys see it more than I see it. I'm not out there. I'm in here. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, so glad of, for what God is doing. Uh, pray for us as we lead, try to lead well through it, and that the Lord would lead us in doing so. Um, working on my little A-team group uh, that I mentioned a couple weeks ago, uh, hoping to meet with them here in the next couple weeks and, and get a little plan together. Um, I know Ben will talk about all the other things going on, so I'll, just, I'll let all that be. Uh, let me throw one more thing at you before we jump into this, and that is this. Um, and uh, today's message uh, will speak some about sex uh, as God designed it for us as men and women in marriage and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and in case you have kids in here and they're not ready for that, I'm giving you a little warning now. And I'm not saying they can't be in here. If you're good with it, I'm good with it. I'm not here to try to be crass about it. But we are talking about it. So you've been warned, okay? Uh, but yeah, and we have tons of stuff for our kids. If, you, if you're busy and you didn't know, we would love for them to be a part of that. And they get to hear about Jesus in there too. That's what that's about. So uh, anyway, um, and to be perfectly clear, what I'm going to be talking through today uh, in no way along the way 
am I interested in playing the shame game, and neither is the Lord, by the way, uh, but instead I want us to be pointed to his grace. Um, and the scriptures just teach us through some things today that I think are important. And for, and for some, I know that listening to a message like this because of things that you've been through in your life, it may be tough. It may be hard to hear some of it. You may be feeling like you're, you know, uh, you know, going to fall through your seat or something by the end of this. Please, please don't don't feel that way the best you can. Just know uh, that the Lord's grace abounds for for us all, uh, and that we are we are all struggling through. You know, most of what we're going to be talking about today in some way, shape, or form. So. Uh, anyway, let's uh, let's just jump into scripture. If you got a Bible, go ahead and get it out. We're going to Proverbs chapter five. Uh, if you don't have a Bible, our ushers will bring you one, and uh, love for you to be able to take that and check it out with us. You will want to see these scriptures today. Okay, don't miss out. Proverbs chapter five. If you don't own a Bible, you can keep that one. We'd love for you to have it. Uh, just let them know that you need it. Um, change your mind. Maybe you have you know buyer's remorse, you didn't get it, or whatever, you know, just go back and get it yourself here in a minute, or whatever. You know, if you stand up and wave at them in the middle of the service, they'll probably still bring you one. We might all think you're crazy, but they'll probably still bring you one, so. Um, so Proverbs chapter 5, this is, uh, you know, I, this series, again, not necessarily expository, it's not expository, uh, in teaching literally through every verse, every chapter and all that kind of stuff, but kind of as it's flowing out, I'm teaching some of it as it goes, and then we'll kind of do a whole bunch of bouncing around or whatever. Um, and I, and in my head, I kind of thought, well, I might save this week, you know, for later in the series or something. This may scare somebody away, but I, I don't think so. I, I think it's I think it's good for us all to hear, and uh, it's it's honestly, it's a good word. Uh, this again, we're, we're, we're hearing from the Lord who is speaking through Solomon son of King David, who is, you know, basically uh, the seed of, uh, you know, adultery. Uh, and then uh, Solomon himself struggled with this greatly. The man had more women than anybody. I mean, just, you know, to put it bluntly, and, and you know, I mean, you can go study it for yourself, but uh, we're getting, you know, I think it's easy for us to take scripture like this and go, you know, I'm getting this scripture and God wants me to feel bad about it. And and listen, I'm not saying that God doesn't want to convict our hearts. He absolutely wants our hearts to be convicted over sin. What he's not interested in doing, again, is that shame game thing. And he's not interested in us getting to a point where we want to shrivel up and just quit life and you know all these things. And some of you have been there. Some of us have been there, you know, with different things, choices we've made along the way, whatever it may be. Uh, and this passage today is is very much Solomon trying to warn. You know, and remember, I, I mentioned, you know, he's it's it's like he's writing to his son, and so you can imagine a a dad and son talk, if you will, where the dad is kind of like shaking the son. He's like, you know, don't go there, you know, kind of thing. Like, you know, it's it's you know, I want to say stay as long as you can, like Billy Madison, but you know, uh, you know, and. Uh, but but it's 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 that kind of a that's 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 the tone. Uh, I really think that that's the approach, uh, and and this passage is great with that. Uh, as and and listen, if anybody knows, this brother knows, and that's why I think the Lord used him to to write these words. And so we have this in, in chapter one. We're going to read through all of chapter uh, sorry chapter five. We're going to read through all of chapter five, verse one. Verse one says this. It says, "My son, be attentive to my wisdom." Incline your ear to my understanding that you may keep discretion and your lips may guard knowledge. Now, this is, again, how we see him over and over throughout the Proverbs just being like, hey, listen to me here. Listen to me here. Hang on and listen to what I've got for you. And so then he's going to go into a warning, okay? And then the warning is going to be followed with, you know, some other, like, Here's what can happen if you don't heed to the warning. And then he's going to give us some things that we can do to help fight against. Okay, so just, just hang through the whole thing here. Verse 3, it says this. It says, For the lips of a forbidden woman drip honey, and her speech is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. 
Her steps follow the path to Sheol. She does not ponder the path of life. Her ways wander, and she does not know it. The interesting thing about this passage, we're going to stop here. Uh, the interesting thing about this passage that we see is, is we're seeing this picture that Solomon is helping pay pave for us. And, and I, honestly, I mean, again, who better to paint the picture than Solomon for all the you know, extramarital you know, stuff that he got himself into along the way? Uh, you know, he's, he's, again, it's a warning. And he's like, don't, don't go there. I know. I know. You know? And as he's painting this picture, one of the things that we're seeing is we're obviously, again, because he's you know, talking to the sun, kind of a, a theme here that we've got throughout the whole book of Proverbs. So this isn't you know, only good for men and not good for the ladies or whatever. Don't, don't take it that way. It's not meant that way. Uh, but we definitely have you know, that slant to it because of how it's written. Uh, you know, where we see this is we see him talking to a son and saying, son, don't go here. And, and here's what this may look like. For the lips of a forbidden woman drip honey, and her speech is smoother than oil. This is, this is, the, this is the, the snare, this is the trap, so to speak, of you know, you know, those moments you know, along the way you know, where people fall into you know, certain things that uh, they wish maybe later on that they didn't. And, uh, and here we have that picture being painted. In fact, interestingly enough, he talks about you know, that this is words, okay? And he's, he's saying that, that her lips, her words of the forbidden woman drip honey and her speech is smoother than oil, you know? But then in verse 4, there's, a, there's another word here that stands out to him. He says, but in the end, she is bitter as wormwood. You see the difference there? Like honey is sweet, Right? But then he says, but she truly is bitter and sharps a two-edged sword. And again, he's, he's warning a son. He's saying, son, don't fall into this. Don't fall prey to this. So you go on into chapter 6. He actually spins a, a little different direction and uh, mentions you know, that the looks of her be might what get him so we have you know actually we have these two things and i don't have that verse forgive me you can it's not too hard to find uh but you know we have these two things basically to go by of what we see uh you know these things and how you know one can be trapped into those moments words looks you know who doesn't like to be puffed up a little bit right you know and and sometimes just the just the very in it what seems is seemingly innocent you know, oh, well, you know, you look nice today, you, you know, whatever. You know, and, and the littlest things sometimes turn into something that we never would have imagined. And here we have this picture of that happening. And then, and then, then he goes into this like whole like, you know, like trying to help us to see the destruction that this leads to. And, and, it, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to go deep here before long. It says, verse 5, it says, her feet go down to death. Her steps follow the path to Sheol. She does not ponder the path of life. Her ways wander, and she does not know it. And he's, he's basically saying, this junk will kill you. Sexual sin will kill you. And I think that, you know, in our hearts we know it. In our minds we think about it from time to time. But we also are great sometimes that trying to compartmentalize the different sins that we struggle with, right? And, and by the way, we, we, we're gonna, this is like hitting adultery pretty hard today, but adultery comes in like many shapes and forms, okay? And honestly, I doubt there's anybody sitting in here that hasn't struggled with this at some point in time. So if you feel like you, you got singled out today, guess again, okay? Everybody's in that struggle, okay? Uh, because this isn't just an action issue, this is a heart issue. We'll get to that in a little while. But but this whole this whole idea that we have a sin and that we you know are okay with it because we think it's not hurting anybody it's not bothering anybody even though it may or may not even include somebody else at times and then you know over here you know we we can go back to jesus and ask forgiveness and then just go back to it when we want to that's not true heart change that's not what the lord sent his son to die on the cross for 
You know, he sent him that we might be free of those things. Satan wants us to believe we can never be free of those things. You may be sitting here today with a porn addiction, and, and Satan wants you to believe you will never overcome that. That is never going to be overcome in your life. And that's not true. Jesus died for you to be free of that, to heal you of that. Now, on your end, yeah, you have to, you have to learn to say no. You have to put up boundaries, you know. I do a fair share of premarital counseling. One of the things that I talk through in premarital counseling is boundaries, you know. And what's it look like for us to have boundaries? What's it look like for us to have boundaries even as husbands and wives? Like, that's an important piece of our marriage. Like, we got boundaries for all kinds of other things. You lock in your car when you go into the store. You lock your house at night when you go to bed. You lock in your guns and your valuables up in a safe. Okay, what are you doing for your marriage? Guys are like, I'm going to lock her up when we get home, you know. <laughs> oh, man. We can't do that. But we can set some healthy boundaries. And I think that that's a conversation that has to happen. And listen, I'm, I'm glad to help with that conversation, get that conversation started. I'm glad to talk about things that Aaron and I do. I mean, I'll just go ahead and tell you a couple of things right off the bat. I won't meet alone with another woman. I won't do it. Not behind a closed door, I won't. You know, somebody needs to really talk to me or something, counsel or whatever, that's fine. They, they can come. We'll meet here. We'll either meet at the house and Aaron will be there. Or we'll meet here in the office and my door will be open and Debbie will usually work out in the, you know, the bullpen area or whatever. That's on purpose. You know, we've even had times, and, and this is, you know, all of our staff kind of adopt this, you know, with some of that kind of stuff or whatever, especially here and working and that kind of thing. And, and so we try to, you know, jump on having each other's backs if a moment arises or whatever. But, you know, and, and people say, oh, well, Chris, that's crazy. You know, my, my life doesn't work that way. Okay, well, make it. What's, what's the most important stuff we got? You know? Is it, our, is it our relationships? Is it our marriages? Is it jobs? Is it, what is it? You know, I, it's so, you know, and I know that's, I know that's tough. I know that's hard for some folks. And, and, and I've even recently talked with some of you about what it's like to have to go to work at people's houses and stuff, you know, and, and, and just how crazy that can be sometimes like you're always on your guard. I, I think that's great. I think it's great that you're on your guard. You got you got to be on your guard. You know, it's defensive driving to protect what is most important that the Lord has given us in this life. That's a great thing. Again, we can talk about that later if you want to talk about it more. Here we see this picture of understanding that this stuff will kill us. It'll kill us. You don't think so? I I, I can I can introduce you to I, I, there's who knows how many couples that are a part of this church that have been through really hard moments to do with these things in their lives. And many of them would willingly say, I, I'm willing to talk to somebody that's going through something, you know, if you need to send them to us or whatever kind of thing. And they would tell you, they'd tell you, look, well, we went through hardest thing of our lives. Many of them, by the grace of God, can say, you know what, the Lord redeemed it. He's made us better on the other side. You know? That's the beauty of it, is that God's grace is still good for this stuff. This isn't a blame game. It's not a shame game. It's not, you know, trying to make people feel bad about, you know, their past or whatever. Again, God sent Jesus to die on the cross that we might be free from our sin and free from those things that, you know, judgment between us and the Lord is done when Jesus died on the cross, he sees the righteousness of Christ. I want to go on to verse 7. He says this, and he says, And now, O sons, listen to me and do not depart from the words of my mouth. Keep your way far from her, and do not go near the door of her house, lest you give your honor to others and your years to the merciless, lest strangers take their fill of your strength and your labors go to the house of a foreigner. That's all big warning stuff. Like this is, this is, the, this is the aftermath of things that are going to happen, you know, kind of stuff. And then it says, verse 11, it says, And at the end of your life you groan, and your flesh and body are consumed. And you say, how I hated discipline, and my heart despised reproof. 
I did not listen to the voice of my teachers or incline my ear to my instructors. I am at the brink of utter ruin in the assembled congregation. This is, again, this is this picture of the awfulness that you go through sometimes for the mistakes that we make in life. We've all been there with different things. Some of them harder than others. Some of them absolutely to do with the exact things that Solomon's talking about here. But, I mean, again, he, he's, just, he's trying to help the young man understand this will kill you. This will hurt you. It's not about you just not getting whatever you want in life. It's about recognizing that there are things along the way that are not good for you. And he's saying, stay away from her. You know, keep far away from her. You know, all through, you know, this section, verses 8 through 14, echo the sights and the sounds of things like divorce papers and lawsuits and alimony checks and ruined reputations and being hurt and brokenness and loneliness and all those things. But listen, listen. We don't stay there. We don't stay there. Many of you have that testimony that you haven't stayed there and the Lord has redeemed your life and is moving in your life and doing great things. And let me, let me just say, I praise God with you for that. And if you're in the middle of one of those moments, I'm praying for you to the point that you'll get there. And you will. Trust in him and you will. This is close to home for many folks right now. We have different folks, multiple folks going through situations like this now. But please know, as painful and haunting as it is to go through that, it can be redeemed. Jesus can have the final victory in all things if we trust in him. We learn from our mistakes. And sometimes we learn from the mistakes of others. And we move on. And we seek better wisdom and better relationships. Be careful in your relationships. If you care about them, don't harm it by messing with God's design for it. You know, I, I, think that that, I think that even goes with, you know, uh, what a lot of folks, you know, see and, and, and think about, you know, scriptures that teach us that we should wait till marriage for things like sex. You know, oh, well, that's archaic and, you know, we're in 2023 and, you know, we don't really need to, we don't really need to heed to that, do we? I don't know. Do you? <laughs> you think the Lord designed it that way for fun? Like, what's the point? And I, I think if we dig on that point, there's a whole lot to it, just to be honest with you. I think, I think at its very core, it's designed, it's truly designed, I believe, to help a young man to grow up, to get responsibility, to be willing to commit to the love of his life before he gets to have this great thing that is a part of our marriages. You say, Chris, I think it's, you know, I think it's okay. I think, you know, well, uh, you know, I think sometimes in our sin, we just want it to be okay, you know? And I know that's not popular, you know, to say, you know, well, this is, you know, I, listen, it's just how God designed it. It's not a, and, and I'm not here to beat you up about it either. It's just how God designed it, you know? And so when we can see the design of it and we can just see sex is a great thing, in the confines of, of this beautiful thing that God has given us. You, get, you guys are getting frisky down there? What's going on? <laughs> you never know. <laughs> I love it. If there was anybody else, I couldn't have said that, right? Oh, man. But what a, what a blessing for us for us to get to enjoy our spouses and why wouldn't we go to great lengths to protect that even on the front end like why wouldn't we go to great lengths to try to to try to see that being uh, what the lord wants it to be and waiting and enjoying it where it's supposed to be i mean you know and i know i know some people be like yo you know chris you know and i've got plenty of friends like this uh, Chris, you know, I've been through, you know, uh, a marriage or three or, you know, whatever. And, you know, I've had some bad rounds. I just don't think I, I can trust anybody. You know, to that person, I would say, have you ever owned a car that you didn't like? 
And has that kept you from car ownership the rest of the days of your life? I don't think so. The lemon law does not apply <laughs> to the person that God really has for you to be with for the rest of your life. And right, I know somebody's getting nudged right now. They're like, all right, he's talking to you today. We're waiting on it. You know, easy, easy. Look, uh, for real though, I mean, if, if you feel yourself beating yourself up, don't, okay? Don't. Run to Jesus. Run to the Lord. You know, find, find your rest in him. Find the truth in him. Trust in him. I mean, you got the story of the prodigal son, right? Remember the prodigal son. And what's he, you know, like he's, you know, he's gone away and he's, you know, squandered the money and all the things and he's ashamed. And then he finds himself literally with nothing. And he's, you know, so far away and he realizes I'm homeless but I have a home, I'm familyless, but I have a dad, maybe I should go home. And he starts for home, and the dad sees him from a long way away, and he takes off running for him to catch him halfway. And he throws his arm around him, throws his arms around him, and he's just so glad that he's come home. Listen to that. That's the picture. The reason that Jesus tells us that parable is he wants us to see that's the picture of the Lord for us. When we are sinners, it doesn't matter what the sin is. Yeah, we're talking about one in particular and kind of a bunch around it today. Yeah, okay. Still doesn't matter. God's grace is good for us all. Run to him. Now, Here's the best part of the passage. The best part of the passage. What we can do in turn to help our marriages. And by the way, I, I know some of you are probably single sitting here today. You're like, well, this seems awfully one sided today, Chris. You know, I'm single and I'm, you know, I don't have a spouse and all that kind of stuff. Well, look, it, one, of, one of two things for you today. One of two things. And I really mean this. One, either maybe this is for you to have this knowledge for when the day comes that you finally find Mr. or Mrs. Wright, okay, and you don't settle, you know, because maybe you did that before and that didn't work out so good, remember? Or maybe, yeah, maybe you're like Paul. Maybe you resign yourself to, and, you, and maybe you could even say right now, you know, I'm going to be single the rest of my life. I know I'm going to be single the rest of my life. That's fine. But this knowledge is the kind of knowledge that we need people discipling other younger people and understanding what this looks like to do this the Lord's way. And without the knowledge, we can't do that for other people. So we need this knowledge. All of us need this knowledge. All right, verse 15. Here we go. You're not even ready. He says this. He says, drink water from your own cistern. Flowing water from your own well, should your springs be scattered abroad. Streams of water in the streets, let them be for yourself alone and not for strangers with you. Are you picking up on what we're talking about right here? This cistern, this well, this is enjoy your spouse. You know, drink the water of your own system. Quit going out there and looking for it somewhere else. Enjoy one another. You don't believe me? Verse 18, let your fountain be blessed and rejoice in the wife of your youth. A lovely deer, a graceful doe. Let her breasts fill you at all times with delight. Be intoxicated always in her love. Praise the Lord. That's what I say to that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I mean, for real. Like, you know, we like to talk about, you know, well, this is meant for marriage and all this kind of stuff, you know. But the truth is, it really is. And like, we have the chance and the ability to really enjoy it. And God wants us to enjoy it. And he created us to enjoy it. But we still treat it like some little, you know, 
something, you know, we don't really want to talk about in church circles or whatever sometimes or whatever. Look, this is his design. He's the, he's the great engineer, right? Who created all things and he created us and he knows us better than ourselves and he knows what we need. What a blessing. Looking for romance? Look no further. It's right there. Drink from your own well. It's for you alone, it says. And that's, you know, that's part of the warning, but it's also part of the blessing, right? He's saying enjoy it. If you go check out even, I'm just going to point you in this direction, you can check it out later. 1 Corinthians 7 you'll see a passage where we even see Paul writing to the church at Corinth about specifically sex between married couples, husbands and wives, and how we shouldn't deprive one another from it. Like it's so important to who we are. And here, back in our passage, it says, Rejoice in the wife of your youth, lovely dear the graceful doe. And then what's it say? That last verse. You're like, Chris, you just want to read that last verse. I do. You're right. A lovely deer, graceful doe, but check it out. Let her breasts fill you at all times with delight. Be intoxicated always in her love. Now, some of you are going to go home this week. Y'all are going to be going to bed late one night. I want you to be careful, okay? Be careful, because some of you men, you're going you're gonna to be like, look, Chris gave me a verse. <laughs> Actually, I gave you two whole sections. If you want to get technical about it, we just didn't read the other one. But I, I think that we've just gotten to a point where we're, we're literally so busy and we're so like into all these other things that are important. And even and some, sometimes, sometimes that's even our children. Our children are important. And we love our kids. But listen, our kids need to see us as husbands and wives as, as behind Jesus, that being the number one relationship. I talk about this a lot with people. I talk about, I've talked about this several times with, you know, especially men that are talking to me about pursuing, you know, a relationship that's kind of gone awry or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Look, you know, this is, this is going to damage things between you and your kids. I can point you in the direction of people in our church right now that could talk to you about that, that would warn you about that, would say how painful that has been for them. And they love their kids. I mean, they'd do anything for their kids. They'd, they'd lay their lives down to have a relationship with maybe even some of their kids to And I think for us to ignore that, we're just being silly. And that's what Solomon's trying to get at here and what the Lord is, why the Lord is using him to talk about that today is is that he wants us to see how important this is, that the all times piece of this is important. Like, it's it's really important. You know, and to go back to the kids thing, I, I want my kids to grow up, I want my little girls to grow up and see a daddy who always loved and cared for their mama. And likewise, I want my son to grow up and I want him to see a daddy and how he treats a woman that God has brought into his life. Those those things are important to me. Like so important to me that I want them to understand our relationship is actually more important than our relationship with them as our kids. We love them. They know we love them, you know. And you can do that. And it's okay. And that's the way the Lord designed it. He wants our kids to grow up seeing godly men and godly women pursuing Jesus and pursuing each other and then in turn, because of that, having as healthy as we can have of, as, of a marriage, of a relationship that we in turn then love and care for our children the very best that we possibly can in the ways that only the Lord would use us in. I gotta tell you, I, I, our our little bit is uh, kind of under the weather today, just ever so slightly, just enough where we couldn't bring her today to be with other kids. But uh, I'm really hating that Aaron's not here for this today. So 
I was I was planning on like for like really like staring at her a whole lot, you know. <laughs> She's great, by the way. I hit the lottery if you didn't know. Uh, I think most people know, but it, it's really, it really is what it seems. I mean, she's, she's just amazing. Um, the passage continues. All times, right? right. Let her breasts fill you at all times with delight. Be intoxicated always in her love. Intoxicated with her love. Maybe if you're just being honest with yourself right now, this is not to try to beat anybody up, okay? Just being honest with yourself right now. Maybe you're just like, you know, Chris, that's not where our marriage is at right now. We're not intoxicated with each other's love. And that's okay. That's okay. Pursue the Lord in that. Pursue the Lord in that. And, and, and do whatever you have to do to get there. Listen, it's, it's worth whatever you have to do. Even if that's counseling, whatever it may be. I, I give out counselors' names and numbers like candy. I'll sit and talk with you if you're flat broke, but I'll also say this. If you're flat broke and USS were to come to the house tomorrow and say the foundation is falling apart, it's going to cost 40 grand to fix it, you'd be like, well, we don't have 40 grand, but I guess we'll figure it out because it's our house. What's a house without a family in it? And we'll balk it like, oh, it's gonna, counseling's going to cost what an hour? I forget that. Who cares what it costs? Throw whatever you have to at it. Sell everything you own to save that relationship. Verse 20 keeps going here. It says, Why should you be intoxicated, my son, with a forbidden woman and embrace the bosom of an adulteress? For a man's ways are before the eyes of the Lord, and he ponders all his paths. The iniquities of the wicked ensnare him, and he is held fast in the cords of his sin. He dies for lack of discipline, and because of his great folly, he is led astray. And to that, I say this. Adultery is not just a sin of action, but it is also a sin of the heart. And we live in a world that is selling us sex from sunup to sundown, from porn to how the media targets us, how they are targeting our kids through the simplest of things. Also part of the reason, we a whole other discussion, why I refuse to give one of my kids a phone until they absolutely have to have it in life. I have done enough counseling. Talk to, there's documentaries about if whatever, go, go watch them. Be scared to death. I say be scared to death about it. Uh, of people, The people that created Facebook and all these other things and how those things are working against us to try to sell us these things, and that includes our kids if we put one of those little devices in their hands and just say, there you go, have at it. Matthew 5.27 says this. It says, you have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. We're all guilty. We're all guilty. There's nobody in here that's not guilty of that. You can't get me to believe it. But God's grace is good for it. And if you're here today and you had a marriage that fell apart at some point, you're beating yourself up over it, stop. Stop. You're not in the boat alone. We are not here to beat ourselves up. We are here to be free in God's grace and for Him to use us. We are not damaged goods. Those things, those struggles that we've had in our lives are not our identity, okay? They are not our identity. Jesus is our identity. And we may pray for healing. We may ask God to give us new minds and new hearts. And He wants to make us a new creation in Christ. Don't believe me? 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed. Behold, the new has come. 
And so I, I just I just say to you today, I, again, I, it's not with any judgment or anything. God is the ultimate engineer and has the ultimate design for us, and that's all part of his plan, and that includes even in our relationships. And can we just see that for what it is and just be like, yeah, God, God knows. He knows what's best for us. And he knows that for us as married people, for us to experience intoxicating love for one another, making a family, all the things, that, that that's, that's how he designed it. And praise God for that. And so how do we, how do we fight it? How do we fight it? Ray Orland says we fight it by being satisfied in our spouse and by being in a saving relationship with Jesus. Are you in a saving relationship with Jesus? Have you trusted in him? Have you seen what happens when he leads your life and he's your Lord and you trust him and seek him for all those decisions that you're making? You trust him and you seek him for the relationship that you're in or the one that you're hoping to be in or whatever it may be. Maybe you aren't married or nowhere near ready for it right now. That's, that's okay. That's, that's okay. If you get to that place in life, at least you know God wants you to be blessed in it and it not be a burden. Life isn't all lemons. God wants to do great things for His glory, and that includes our relationships. He wants to overcome the places where we've messed up and be glorified in how He uses that later in our lives. Some of you can already attest to what that's like and how you have gotten to encourage others going through really terrible moments in life because you went through a terrible moment in life. Maybe you're in a terrible moment in life. God loves you. He cares for you. He wants to work through all those things for His glory. And He will if you'll let Him. He will. Be encouraged in that. Know that you're not alone. It's not a bad life goal to seek intoxicating love. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your word. Even in these subjects of things that are not always the easiest of things to think about or to carry the burdens of hurt from the past. Lord, I just pray. I pray for freedom in the lives of folks, Lord, that maybe are struggling right now from things that have happened in their past. God, I just pray that they would see that what you've done through Jesus on the cross is enough. I pray that they would know freedom from that. God, they may not know it today, but God, I pray that they would know it. I pray that right now, that today, I pray that you would give them the peace that surpasses all understanding. God, that only comes from you. And it only comes from knowing you. And God, I just pray over them today, Lord, that they would seek, Lord, healing. Lord, if they're married in their relationships, if they're not married, just in their relationship with you and what may be in the future. God, lift them up to you. Lord, I lift up our single people to you. God, we, some of us don't even know or can fathom or times how hard that may be. God, we just lift them up to you. God, I pray, Lord, that you would minister to them in a special way. God, that you would work in their hearts, work in their lives. Again, peace that surpasses all understanding. God, may they have it. May it come from you. God, help us to find intoxicating love with our spouses. God, help us to find intoxicating love with you. God, thank you for Jesus. God, for anyone that's here right now that hasn't trusted in you to be their Savior. God, I pray that today they would believe in the cross and the bloodshed that it was enough to save us. That an empty tomb defeating death was enough for us to find life in death. God, thank you for new life there. Thank, thank you for new life now. May we use it for your glory. We ask this today. Your son's precious name.
Amen. If you would like to talk to somebody about what it means to know Jesus, I mean, it's the way you're right now.